What's going on, people? Welcome to another episode of the Natty News Daily Podcast. This is a fun one because the three of us might have just got out of bed and and Frederick's well-fed midday for him over there. But uh, you know what? The, the viewers wanted to see this episode, so you know we got to make it happen. So James has got a cup of coffee. I got a little pre-workout because we got to train after this. And Dan's, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, Dan's getting ready to go to work, but you know what? The Natty community calls for this, so we we answer. So, Frederick Ibsen, welcome to the podcast, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it a lot. No, oh, no problem. So, obviously, uh, you know, we touched on it a little bit before we come on air here, but coming down from the high of WNBF World's incredible showing, um, I think you and you and Benjamin Mann going back and forth in that middleweight class was probably, in my opinion, maybe the most exciting mm. part of the so- the show for bodybuilding especially because it was this it wasn't clear yeah, cut. Yeah. you know you'd go back and forth and you know dan and i were watching it live and messaging each other back and forth and we're like ah oh, i could give this shot to benjamin and then it'd be like oh well frederick's got this one so we're trying to you know tally the scores <laughs> in our head so maybe tell us about your your experience at worlds because if, if i remember correctly this is your first time at worlds right yeah, so it's a, it's my second time at worlds uh, oh, the okay. first one was in was an amateur in 2018 ah, okay. Yeah, where I won the pro card, and then the corona came, and we had to, we had to like, get all corona before I could uh, try yeah. my pro debut. So yeah. yeah, it's my second. It was my second time, and um, yeah, it was a phenomenal experience. Um, I went over there uh, solo as a solo player. <laughs> oh damn! Um, yeah, so I wanted to bring my family um, for the experience and have a good time, but we figured out it was. It was a bit too much hassle and also like finances like the the, the tickets over there I mean, and it was just yeah. and then the the jet lag taking care of the kids and everything would, would <laughs> yeah. be a bit too much so we just For decided sure. you go over there do the best and we, we have a good time when you when you get back right yeah um so yeah it was a phenomenal show um a lot of the people that you have been following for i don't yeah. know a roughly i don't know 10 years you know all the 3M, 3MJ guys and a lot of other big profiles. Um, yeah. So it was a great experience. Just be up there amongst some of the best in the world. Yeah, phenomenal experience. Um, yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. How did how did you find uh, like being by yourself from like a like a mental standpoint? Like, were you just kind of like like athlete mode for a couple days or did you have those times where you're like ah man like i miss my family like this is kind of boring by myself like what was that like like from i actually like traveling alone because i mean a lot of people like to have like a person with them and so they can like talk to the person like they can calm you down maybe or something i don't know but just i I actually like to do it alone um so it, it it suits me pretty good actually and i don't have to like take into consideration anything yeah, I get yeah. told or just I can just this is the plan follow it and it's right. going to be good so it actually suits me pretty well and and um yeah so also did the, the prep myself so I didn't have a, a coach and so so um so yeah everything just yep like fell in place pretty good honestly yeah, that's um perfect. how yeah. was how um, was travel with like peak week and stuff what was that like for you oh yeah so the tur- traveling over there was actually pretty pretty bad i mean the jet lag stuff like over there was i came in wednesday and the show was on sunday right um, how long was your flight yeah the flight was like with the waiting and stop in frankfurt in germany right all almost like 20 hours i think Oof. yeah so the jet lag <laughs> was actually pretty tough getting over there um I couldn't sleep when it was night there, so I spent a couple of days trying to get to the to the normal routine over there, right? Um, yeah. yeah. So that was a bit tough, but in, in a couple of days, it it went. I, I came into the normal routine of the. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. That that's smart, and and that's that's kind of a common trend with everybody we've talked to that's had to come is get there early, like especially that mm-hmm. distance, right? Get there early, try to let your body like acclimate a little bit, because. You never know with flying with like water retention or other things that you might have to remedy up to the show. So obviously you getting there three or four days in advance, you know, limited those problems. What did you do like nutritionally over that, you know, 20 hour travel period? 
Yeah, so um, I did like my peak week protocol is um, I did let me think. Uh, so I did a fat load, like where I'm just completely emptying myself from from the carbohydrates, right? Um, okay. So fat loading, very low calories. Um, so when I got over there, and I did that on Monday, let me think, yeah, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So the last travel day was just horrendous. <laughs> um, but then to to like to hit it, so when I got there, I could start carb up um, and really fill out the frame with water and carbohydrates and calories in general. Um, and it worked pretty good, honestly. Um, to super compensate that good build. Mm-hmm. Uh, look on on stage on on uh, Sunday, um, yep. spilled a little over like the classic a little spit spill over maybe Saturday where I like did some damage control, lowered yep. the calories a little pulled bit, back. and yeah, pulled back a little bit and and uh, it worked all right I think. Um, you look yeah. great, so it did. It worked yeah. just fine. <laughs> it worked all right, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it was good. It was good. Excellent. So, uh, is, you're... is that the same protocol you've done in the past, or was that new to you? Actually, it's it's something I did with my clients the last two seasons. So twenty uh, twenty yeah twenty this season sorry because they started earlier. So this season and then twenty twenty two, and it's just something that worked pretty well uh, for my clients and myself as well. Mm-hmm. So this it kind of gives you this you you go into this tunnel vision. So instead of just maybe I don't know front load or back load, you, you you do this a bit more hardcore, like like emptying yourself big time and then just push you really hard. Like I have clients doing thousand uh, carbs two two days in a row, maybe yeah, some even did three, and it's just it 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 kind of giving them it gives them a lot of drive instead of this slow filling up. So it, it's something that worked well. Yep. Um, it's not the way to do it, but I found it pretty useful the, the last two seasons. Um, and it worked on uh, pretty much everyone I did it with. What did you do for carbs yeah. before the show? Like, what was your totals? Like the, Oh, man. I did just the first day, uh, Wednesday, I did just under 1,000 carbs. And then if they got oh, Thursday, wow. I loaded with approximately 300, I think, so 700. And then... Friday, six hundred, I think. A bit spilled Saturday, and then did, did some damage control, lowered it to I don't know, maybe three fifty or something. And okay, so you did like a big hit at the beginning, and then kind of yeah. monitored as needed. Exactly. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. And yeah, I think like the patterns I've watched, like both with my clients and also my my colleagues' clients, that I think a lot of people they hold too much back in the car but because they're maybe too afraid i mean yeah. obviously we all different and and some can can like deal with a lot more cars than others but i think mostly um doing this hard carb up if you did your groundwork obviously right? it, it only works if you're like yeah at low body fat percentage and you're not like fat and stuff um yeah yeah it works really well um i see better results like when you truly like carb up instead of being too afraid that's just my opinion at least um, yeah yeah i uh you know we're, we're all coaches that's at some realm yeah. or another I'm, I'm sure james can probably echo this too but it's almost like especially with maybe a first timer that like you oh, get yeah. them in that really crisp condition and you're like i don't want to push you too far because i don't know where that yeah. ceiling is and it's like well especially if they're a mm-hmm. smaller frame like some of my athletes are like bantams and lightweights i'm like well i'd rather yeah. bring you in like diced because if you sure. spill, you're just going to look small now. Whereas if you're peeled, even if you're not bursting at the seams, you're still going to out-condition guys. So it's – it's. Uh, I agree with you though because I had that experience with Cliff last year where he pushed me like oh, yeah. way more carb than I'd ever done in the past. And the look was amazing. Right. But that's like I trust his judgment full full force. Yeah. Whereas, mm-hmm. you know, for me with, with clients, you know, now that I'm working with some of them for multiple seasons, I can get a bit better gauge on things. But – that first time or two around, you got. I, I'm always like you said, a little bit hesitant to, you know, throw sure. 800 at them right out of the gate because, you know, so, maybe maybe 550 was their sweet spot. For sure. Like Cliff mm-hmm. does that. Like he's actually known for the the, the hard yeah. 
very hard carb off dry brand. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's what that's what we did last year twice. We did basically mm-hmm. no carbs for uh Monday to Thursday, and then the Friday mm-hmm. was like that nine to a yeah, thousand. Yeah. And then Saturday yeah. was like like I remember I weighed in Friday, 149, fully depleted, and then stepped on stage Saturday, 158. I was just like oh, yeah. Oh, I was ballooned right up, man. It was <laughs> wild. <laughs> nice. For example, like when we talk about Kaba, for example, Dirk, uh, um, like uh, Nunez clo- uh, climb, yep. you know, yep. Dirk, yeah, obviously. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they, he did a very, very like slow Kaba. Like, yeah, his, his peak, was very, just yeah. Very slow. And just, and I think that's how they do it. They like to do it, the protocol in, in 3DMJ. They don't go very hard. And he, he had that, like, he won so much because he had, like, probably the most shredded look on stage in this WBF. Yeah. Um, so they probably played it safe and they could, I mean, it turns out pretty good, right? So Yeah, yeah he did all right. <laughs> he did all right. <laughs> um, talk so, yeah, about I mean, uh, your, your training a little bit. You know, I... Uh... I was I was trying to dig dig more info on you on Instagram, but you're not a super like social media dude. You know, you get the posing videos mm-hmm. from time to time. I'm trying to yeah. find stage shots of you, and I can't find them anywhere. So, <laughs> give give no, some insight true. as to your approach with training. Uh, yeah. You know, balancing bodybuilding with your life. You know, obviously you got kids mm-hmm. now. So so can you just talk about your your life within bodybuilding? Because I I don't sure. know a whole lot, and I'm sure most people don't, but would love to know. Sure. Yeah, so I'm lucky that I work as a personal trainer. I've been doing it for since 2016. So, in my, person or my, online? Uh, both actually, both in person nice. and also online. Yeah. Okay. So that have allowed me to to make sure I can give 100 percent to my bodybuilding career as well on the side because I have a lot of flexibility. As you know, yep. as a personal trainer, we have a lot of flexibility. Yep. So I've I've always been able to. Um, plan my sessions and make sure they are in every week. Mm. For example, if I had a nine to five job plus kids, I mean, it would could maybe be more tricky. Um, so I'm blessed to have that position and been having that position since then. So, um, I've been training five times a week for the last man, like eight years, five times a week. That's like the best sweet spot for me. Um, I like to train. So, um, so these five sessions a week allows me to to maximize my 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 uh, my progression yep. and and moving forward in my career and also to to have time being a family man. Um, so so uh, so yeah, I've been doing basically close to the same split for many many years, where I've been running a classic um, a push session, then a lower session. Then a pool, and okay. I will be having my uh, another lower session, and uh, an upper session, and then in between, obviously, a few rest days, right? Yep. Um, and I think it's, it's been working well. And my the way I like to train, and like obviously, thinking back to maybe two thousand sixteen to now, I've always obviously developed more like knowledge, like how to put together. A more structured, yep. um, intelligent training um, structure, and I like to let's call it like a hybrid. So, some of my bigger exercises are maybe reps in reserve structured. Okay. Yep. So I like um, I, I usually train for six weeks, sometimes deload in week six, and then ref- like then update my my meso cycle right. Right, right, and and then and then um, uh, also have a lot of my my most of my accessory work like smaller muscle groups, races, bicep triceps. Yep. Some of some of the cable machinery is just pure high intensity. Yep. Just no. go, yeah, just go as hard as I can. And then just trying to really develop my skill set in terms of being very precise in my in my execution just like the tempo is is standardized and my my range of motion is always the same try to not train my ego but train the actual muscle like this combination of things yeah um, yep. have developed a lot the last three years 
Um, How old are you, by okay. the way? I'm 33. I'm 33, 33 years old. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's fun. It's funny. I just want to touch on that. It's funny you mentioned because I've I've noticed just within myself, but the circle of of natural body building that we're in is that now that uh, all of us are like between that, you know, 27, 28, 29, early 30s, I can see us all shift our training to like more calculated and control, less go in there and beat my head off the wall. And whether that's just kind of a because it's it's interesting that like I've seen us all do it together in that again in that age bracket where it's like late teens early 20s we were going in there and just beating the shit out of ourselves didn't care sure. and now it's like okay well how can I do this the best possible way how can I keep myself injury free like you said exactly. control tempo and and that kind of stuff it's just an inter- interesting observation I've had and you know I'm sure yeah. you've got some younger clients that just want to go in there and just I'll just pick it up man I'm like well yeah exactly you can do it better but I get it because I also just went in there and picked shit up and didn't care right exactly yeah so this exactly that's completely true so this way we train now it's a maybe it's maybe a little more unsexy I don't know yeah for <laughs> sure that that's it, that's it's, honestly it's just, a, a good way to yeah. describe it's it very because, very yeah. deliberate though yeah very for sure yeah. and but it's, it's just not like, as yeah no exactly and it's just but when you get the hang of it, you, you start to understand, all right, um, I can keep training. I, I rarely get injury. I, I never had an injury. I obviously had like small time, yeah. you know, a bit itching here and there, you know, the shoulders a little bit, but never had an injury. And I believe like this kind of approach is, could be one of the main reasons, right? And yeah, like yeah. in the, like every other sport, like injuries is always the yeah. main cause of you like, having to shut it down of, yeah instead of being able to slowly just slightly getting better and better like from month to month year to year even so, yeah yeah longevity yeah. right like especially with sure. kind of the i mean any athletic endeavor but for us it's like can our connective tissues hold up how's my mm-hmm. hips feeling how's my shoulders feeling and if you can you know get away from things that you know, we've, we've all got those exercises where every time we do it, we're like, oh, this does not feel good. This hurts my shoulder. This snaps my neck up, but I have to, because it's a barbell. Exactly. And now we're free at weights. The, yeah, free <laughs> weights right now. I mean, a lot of our training, if you looked at, it's like deliberate table stuff and dumbbell stuff with control and form. Like I think of Dirk, when I think of this subject matter where oh, yeah, you, for sure. you look yeah. at his training and, you know, like you said, it's not sexy. Like it's just these you know, I'm just going to use the term weird because if you first looked at it, if you, if you were someone coming in and were like, oh, who's this dirt guy? He looks crazy. And you see some of his training, like it's slow, exactly. methodical. You know, mm. I saw his leg extension video the other day. I think it was like 60 pounds on the stack and it's just mm. this slow. And then you're mm. like, well, I thought you had to like barbell squat till you puked. <laughs> Exactly. And we've all exactly. probably done that in those early years, but oh, it's yeah. just, it's just again, it's just something I find so interesting how how we wave through that that training yeah. career standpoint. You know, Jeff Alberts is someone who has been doing this mm-hmm. decades longer than us, and he talks about like how his training has changed over time. And you know, back in the day, he used mm-hmm. to just pound himself, and now it's it's yeah. it's all about quality, not necessarily just like well. I have to do this because bodybuilding, right? <laughs> exactly. For sure. Absolutely. That's completely true. What yeah. about nutrition? Are you a meal plan guy? Are you my fitness pal all day? What's what's that look yeah, like? Yeah, so I'm actually the my one of the my fitness pal guys. It's oh. just always <laughs> it's just always suited me better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah, it's just always suited me better. Like the lifestyle I live. Um yeah. Um Obviously, I don't live off donuts and 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 cake, but I always like eighty percent of my calories uh, is classic good food sources, right? Fruits, yep. a bit of veggies, yep. classic uh, carb sources, um, and then I fill in, especially obviously in the off season, with the goodies here and there. Um, well, you and, said and you crazy. said after uh, Worlds, you said you were feeling oh, like man. hippo before we come live, so. Oh, I can yeah. only, so, I can only imagine. I'm 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 gonna be honest with you. I've always been one of those binge binge guys post show. It's just you bet, buddy. Know, just, it, just get it in, it's man. Just, 
it's just me. <laughs> so I, I, I always have these these things for like I don't know three, three, four, five days, like yeah. crazy eating, right? And ten thousand calorie challenge per day. Easy ten thousand, right? Um, <laughs> I ate like uh, the, the Monday, the day after the show. I ate so much food, so I could barely walk. So I was like, it, it hurt, <laughs> it, it hurt so much. So I had to get back to the the hotel, just lie down. And in America, you can buy these. What's it called? I think it's called Pepto. You know what a pep, Pepto is? Yeah. Like this. You know what that is? <laughs> no, like oh, the like, pink like, stuff. Like yeah. Pepto Bismol. Pepto Bismol. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. just, I don't know what it. I don't know what it what's in it, but it it helps. <laughs> <laughs> so I, had, I had to to chug a little bit of that and just took the pain away. But yeah, it's just. I, mean, I wonder. I wonder if me. I could Photoshop a picture of you like this with like Pepto in your hands. Oh yeah, like do that on the post of the biceps. I don't yeah, know. That's something right. Like that. Yeah, <laughs> the, um, the um, thumbnail. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> but uh, that's just, yeah. And then after the feasting, the feasting. I'm getting back. Yeah, I'm getting back <laughs> to some 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 normal. Um, more. You gotta get. You gotta get it out of your system, man. Like, for you sure. know, I I understand the whole reversing out and that kind of stuff. And don't get me wrong, like, there's a fine line between having some fun and then being a total idiot and we've all done that but like i remember after my last show last year i i was like i called cliff and, and we were talking and i was like if you send me macros for tomorrow i'm just replying lol and hanging up like i'm not <laughs> i'm not doing that right exactly. Exactly. especially after i watched i watched you eat like four of those massive cookies in like two seconds Leroy. Right? yeah <laughs> oh yeah they're just like yeah. gone it's just it's basically just a and an, a black hole just it's never it's weird it's weird eh? like yeah. yeah, like like James said, we had these gourmet cookies, and I crushed. And oh. they're, there's no doubt they're not like knocking on a thousand calories a piece. And then Man. like 20 minutes later, we were all sitting there, and I'm like, "We going to Chick Fil A or what?" <laughs> exactly. It just it's nothing, right? It's crazy how the the body can, yeah, like make these changes with the hormones and shit, right? It's crazy. Yep. Yeah. So so here we are now. Um, what do we now? A month post show? Has it been that yeah, long? Yeah, approximately a month. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. Wow. <laughs> Time. What is that? Time uh, flies, man. So what's the what's the off season look like for you then? What's the plan? Yeah. What have you determined needs work? What what's the just give me it all. What's the off season? Yeah. So I will be having I will push my off season as long as possible. And like time frame wise, I'm thinking of pushing to 2025. And then having mini cuts in between just to not get unnecessarily huge and fat. Um, what, uh, before we, before we, that just kind of triggered something, what's your scale sure. range between prep and off season? Yeah. Oh yeah. So I've once pushed my body weight 202 kilos, but Math. that That's was in Corona. That was in Corona. 202, 202 pounds. Uh, uh, 202 kilos. kilos. Yeah, 102 kilos. How much that's it? 102. 102. Okay. 225 ish. Yeah. 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 And it was not needed, um, <laughs> but it happened. Yeah. It in happens. Corona. And um, I think a good sweet spot uh, for me is when I start to hit the, let's say, 93, 95. I'm pretty deep and so like good. 205 ish, yeah. so 20 pounds yeah. higher than that. Yeah. Like when I start to get in that um, range, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good in off season. And uh, from there on up, it's just, it's tough because, you know, yeah. eating and that's probably the hardest part when you truly get to the deep off season. Um, so, so, um, so yeah, right now I'm around 87 kilos, just under 80. Like depending on when I ate my last meal, yeah, maybe like four a, wake ups. Yeah, so, so nine, 80, fuck ninety. Yeah, so 87, 88 kilograms right now, and I, right now I have the I don't have that needs for, to to eat. Like I I can control it now, mm-hmm. so I'm pretty stable now. Um, my 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 hormones have balanced more. I don't have that classic, usually for me at least. It's pretty easy throughout the day when you get to that, I don't know, 6 p.m. 
until bedtime. That's where the the need <laughs> bring, to bring it on. <laughs> yeah, I I could just I could eat a lot of food right now. It's pretty. It's it's fading now. So and that's usually a um like a signal for me that all right, you you're getting somewhat in a stable position now. Yep. So right now, I'm eating um thirty six hundred calories to thirty eight hundred. Okay. Ish. Yeah. I'm tracking when I can track and when it's easy to track. And when I have like a social event or I'm going out with my kids or eating at home with the family, which we usually do in the evening, I'm just estimating it right. And yep. mm-hmm. that that's gonna be it, honestly, to until twenty twenty five. And what was your stage weight? My stage weight was just under eighty kilos. I do I weighed it in, but I was a little bit depleted, a little bit. Uh, that was a yeah because i was yeah because um so they had the middleweights lightweights and the heavyweights i actually thought they would make more like i thought of bantam weights and yeah i was I surprised didn't. they didn't do a bantam so and <laughs> i knew that benjamin schuster was coming for the worlds obviously and i just didn't want to go against him so <laughs> i i was hoping he would be in a, in a one class heavier than me because I knew he was around 82, 83, I think. Um, so I was just thinking in my head, okay, I just need to get under 80 because then he will be in one higher, cla- um, what's it called, division than me. Um, weight class, category. yeah. Yeah, weight class, yeah. exactly. Yeah, whatever you call it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, but that didn't happen. So, yeah. We, so uh, so we quick did. math on that. You were about 175, 176 on stage. Exactly. Yeah, sounds that's right. Yep. How, exactly. how tall are you? That was depleted weight, right? Sort of depleted. Actually, I did do some carb loading, but I had a big. Gap. Actually, you started loading, yeah, early, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just I was not depleted, but I had a big gap from my last meet onto the weigh in because I wanted to make sure. Yep. I got mm-hmm. under eighty because of the middleweight, lightweight. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so, so yeah, um, yeah, awesome. As far as uh, competitive aspirations for 2025, what are you kind of looking at? Well, yeah, so me and my wife, we actually, we actually talked about this. This would probably be the last one, but then we, we went home. Like this and... year? This year would be the last one? Yeah, but 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 then we went home <laughs> and we talked about it, and she knew that, it, it, I mean... I, lo- I have a passion for bodybuilding. I like lo- I love the, um, the prep stuff. I love getting on stage. So, it's not hundred percent the last one. We just not we not we just not sure when the next one will be. Um, yeah. I don't think it will be twenty five, but a lot can can happen in two years, right? We, we never know. So, but I'm gonna take a break now, and I'm just gonna do what I did. Like if I want to get on stage, just keep progressing and not slowing down. So, yeah. Would you, yeah. so would Worlds be the focus then to just go back? World would be one of my focus, but also, um, um, what's the other one? INBA, right? PNBA? Yep. That could also be a big focus because here in Denmark, uh, my friend Daniel Lisko, I don't know if you know him. He he has the, he owns the dub, uh, DN, DNFA. And that's, yeah. if that's in defect. Oh, uh, the NCA. That's like the, it's just yeah, the Danish okay. Federation. Yeah, it's yeah. Okay, Danish the Danish Federation. Federation. And they are um in the INBA Federation. So also to to like help that grow and show some support yeah. and everything, I could also be focusing on that one. Are you a INBA pro as well or no? No. I lost to Benjamin Schuster. <laughs> oh yeah, that's actually, it. yeah, I uh, I went to Germany. And uh, also took second place there. I won yep. my division, but then in the overall lost to him. Um, so I didn't get the pro card in that one. Because, yeah, you, you would have uh, like INBA Worlds and stuff over there you could do too, right? Yeah, we have that in Europe. Yeah. Um, so that's also a good possibility. Yeah. Next time, yeah. Yeah, you up there with Mitch. That'd be sick. Oh, yeah, he's a, he's a crazy dude as well. <laughs> that would be he, wicked. He won the... He won Worlds yeah, he won this the year. World. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, crazy. Cool. That'd be epic. Yeah. yeah. No, that that's cool, man. I, I think uh again, I think this is be a, be a cool podcast for people because you are married with kids and stuff like that. And 
you know, I think a lot of people just assume this, like assume what a bodybuilder is, is such this one dimensional, isolated, one track thing, whereas there's so many other facets to your life that you're like, you know what, I, I had a conversation with my wife, like maybe, maybe it's 25, maybe it's not, maybe this is it. And, you know, balancing that with kids and, and work and all this kind of stuff, not being married to a meal plan, because you're like, you know what, for dinner tonight, we'll figure it out. Like, I think that is such an important subject matter to get across because, you know, we work with people, we, we live this world and we see kind of people just like, I see clients that are like, man, like I, I'm getting clients that are messaging me stressing about Christmas. And I'm mm -hmm. like, guys, <laughs> like none of you are two weeks out at Christmas. <laughs> the closest mm -hmm. any of you are is 18 weeks. Like nice. go have dinner. Don't be an idiot, but just go have dinner. Like, I'm, I won't be sending you messages about that, Leroy. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, I know what to do. Yeah. yeah, no, but no, I, I, I love it too because the thing about our sport, not competing is probably more beneficial for you as an athlete, right? People say like, well, I don't know when I'm going to compete again or I don't know like when the next season will be people see that as a negative, like, oh, he's retiring, he's semi-retiring, he's going to fade. No, you're spending more time in a surplus where like the next time, if you do decide to come back, because you live the lifestyle, right? You're a trainer, you're a coach. It's not like you're going to stop any of those things. If anything, you're just going to refine things for a longer and longer period of time where when you do decide to come back, or if you do, it's going to be of a better luck, honestly. Absolutely. Yeah, we build a physique in the, in the off-season, right? I mean, for sure, mm -hmm. right there it is. Um, yeah, people tend to forget that it's just they think of the prep, but they're forgetting like if you want to improve, you gotta actually just, build muscle. Yeah, actually build muscle right from 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 season to season. Um, and take two years can be the the turn point from being an amateur level to man, you're not pro. You yep. did your off season well. You you spent your time just in this in the training session good. You you would take the boxes. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wholeheartedly agree, man. I think that's a good way to close this out. We appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you, man, so much. If uh, people want to follow you, if they want to stay up to date with everything you're doing, where's the where's the best place for them to find you, man? Instagram, I think Instagram. Yeah, Ibsen Fitness on Instagram, um, for sure. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. All right, people. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know. Give it a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe for future episodes, and we'll see you guys in the next one.